Hey, this is Patrick from Frontly. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use our block versions feature combined with our local state variable feature, which allows you to build responsive blocks that update in real time based on users clicking buttons and things like that. So it's really powerful and it's actually pretty easy to set up. So I'm going to jump right into it and I'm going to create a button. So I'm going to set this button text to say inactive. That's going to be the default state of this button. So when the page loads by default, I'm going to have it say inactive. And then if the user clicks on the button, I'm going to make it say active. And I will show you how to do that right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new version of this block. And this is going to be the active version. So um, I'm gonna click on this edit symbol. I just created a new version, so now it's appearing in this dropdown. To edit the version, I click on this edit button here, and I'm gonna give the version a name so I can keep track of what this state is. In this case, I'm just gonna call it active, and I will add a condition to this version, which is how I determine when this version of this block is going to appear. And so a version is actually just only the settings that I change while this version is active in the editor, that's essentially what will appear. So you'll see how it all works as I go to the next steps, but right now I'm gonna create a condition that tells Frontly when this version of the block should, should show instead of the default. So we haven't created the local state action yet, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go click on this variable insertion and we're gonna select local state. So what local state is, if you've never used it, it's just essentially a, imagine a, a bucket where you get to store values and they can be whatever kind of values you want. Um, essentially there's just a name and a value. We call the name a key. Um, that's the way that you access the value and then the value is kind of whatever you want. So in this case, I'm being asked for the field. I'm just gonna call this, um, I'm gonna call this status, and you'll see how this is used. So because I use this variable injector, it's injecting this variable right into the field for me. I could also just type it in with uh, two brackets, local state with a capital S, and then local state dot whatever the, the key of my variable is. So again, we'll set the local state in the next step and then everything will come together. So I'm gonna say local state dot status equals active. So that's the condition that I want to be true for this version of the block to show. And now that I've set this up and I'm currently editing the active version of this block, I can go change the text. So I can change this to say active and I can change the background color. Let's say when it's active, we want it to be a nice green color. And if I want, just to make it more fun, I should make the inactive um, more of like an, an inactive color. Let's say, we'll say it's a gray. So it's colorless, it's inactive. Now, this is the default version of the block. All we have to do now that we've defined these two versions and we've defined the variable uh, that we want to, to use, we just have to create the click actions to trigger this back and forth um, thing that we're gonna put together here. So. I'm gonna go add my click action. I'm gonna click on this empty action step and I have all these different options. Right now we're only concerned about the update local state. So this is where you can set local state values for dynamic rendering. That's exactly what we're doing. And so you can add multiple values to the local state at the same time if you want, if you had multiple things you needed to store there. Again, just think of this as sort of a closet that you're you're putting information that you can access whenever you want um, from any of your pages, as long as the, the, the session hasn't been ended by the user refreshing the page or logging out or something like that. So I'm just gonna set this to uh, status, and then the value is going to be active. So that's it. I've, I've decided that I'm calling this status. So this isn't, you know, this isn't some predefined thing. I'm making this up and I'm saying, I'm gonna store this value called status or this, this uh, value active under the key called status in the local state. So just from doing that, when I click on this button, it's actually gonna toggle the, uh, the button state to change.
But the only other thing I need to do is now, just because that's what I want to do, is I want to go to the active version. And I want to do the same, but the opposite. So I'm going to add another update local state. And I'm going to say status equals inactive. And so based on the conditions that I set up here, this default is going to show because the active condition won't be met. So that's all I have to do. I'm going to hit save and I'm going to hit preview. So we're going to go to my sample app. As you can see, the default state is here. And if I click on this, it updates right away to the active state. And because I also set a click action on the active button, I can just go back and forth now. So this is really cool. Um, but maybe I should show you one more example of why this is useful. So let's say that I did want to create some kind of toggle here where you know, you're know you deactivating and activating something. But I don't have to limit the, uh, the local state value to be only used for that. Maybe I want to have an entire table on my page that uses my you know order data. And maybe I only want this to show when this is set to active. And so in this case, to do that, I won't use block versions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the more tab for this table that I just added. And I'm going to go down. Um, I'm going to find, yes, the display conditions. So you'll find conditions all over the app. You can see these ones here, uh, allow editing, allow deleting. So these are all conditions are just a set of these uh, conditions that have to be met in order for something to happen. And in this context, this is the visibility section. And so a display condition on the block level is going to actually show or hide the entire block from the page based on if it meets these conditions. So I'm going to add a condition just like we did. I'll even type this one in just to show you. So I can go local state, make sure there's a capital S there, local state dot status equals active. So again, all I've done is I've told this page that when this condition is true, I want this table to appear. But if not, I don't want the table to appear. So I'm going to go back to my page and I'm going to refresh. So if I set it up correctly, the button is here. It says inactive. And when I press active, it reveals the table in real time. And then the data loads for the table. So it's really powerful because you can create these pages that are showing and hiding different sections and have these very nice looking uh, responsive and reactive elements. So just a very cool thing that you can use in your apps. And I hope this tutorial helps you understand um, the local state a little bit better. Um, one thing that I will mention that, that I would mention when you are, <clears throat> one thing that I would recommend when using local state, especially at the start, is to add a text block to your page somewhere. And you can display the value of the local state in it. So you can go local state dot status. And I'll even type in status colon local state status. So all that's going to do, this would just be sort of during development if, if you don't need that, just so you can keep track of what the local state value is currently set to, um, especially if you're using a lot of different local state values and you're kind of unsure about how things are, this kind of helps. So I can see that when I click on this, it updates in real time. And then when I deactivate it, it just helps me keep track. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoy playing around with the local state and block versions and display conditions. They're very powerful features.